Today I'm going to be sharing with you my 2024 houseplant wish list. First on the list we have the Monstera Albo and I think most of us have our eyes on one of these. They are very popular but I don't really go with trends but I just really love this one because I love it and I'd like one with medium variegations so that there aren't huge white chunks because the white chunks do tend to die off if, if they're just pure white too much so kind of green with white speckles would do me so it could either be a Monstera Albo or a Thai Constellation, either one would be great. So I have seen a few of these in garden centres around near me but they've just been too pricey for me so I've been patiently waiting for the price to come down so hopefully this year maybe the price will be right and the time will be right and everything will come together so we'll see. And next up I have the Schlismatoglottis wallichii and I just love the look of this plant and I'm a little bit more experienced with my houseplant care now. I'm not quite in the beginner category but maybe intermediate so I feel like I could take on slightly more challenging plants and this one just has the gorgeous white variegation on the leaves. Um, I am looking for more variegated plants this year because I have a lot of solid green plants and I love them but I'd really love to have some variegated plants in my collection and this one is just so stunning and not only is the variegation in the leaves gorgeous, I love the shape of the leaves, it looks very tropical and yeah this is one that I would just love to try. I've not seen it anywhere here in the uh, garden centres. I have seen it online so maybe that's one option. I've never ordered plants online before though so I have to say I'm a little bit nervous about doing that. Next up I have the Skindapsus Pictus Silverian and again this is a variegated plant but this time it has this gorgeous silver colour and I don't think I have any plants with a silver colour. So this is, I mean look at it, it's just stunning. It is so beautiful and I would love to have this one trailing off of my shelf so I would definitely have it trailing there and yeah I just think it looks gorgeous. Um, I think you can probably grow up a pole too but I think I'd like to have mine just cascading down on the shelf there. But that silvery colour is just so gorgeous. Um, I definitely love to find one of these. It's not one that I've seen about. Um, I don't know if anyone else sees this one around, but I've certainly not seen it before, not that I remember. But with any luck, hopefully I may come across it this year, and if I do, I will definitely be adding that one to my collection. Next on my list is the Epipremnum Pinatum Baltic Blue. And this one has just these gorgeous kind of long leaves that eventually fenestrate by the looks of it and I just love the sort of elegant look of these leaves and yeah this is one that I've kind of admired for a while now and I would love to add this one to my collection it looks gorgeous either trailing or going up a pole but it's just those funny shaped leaves they kind of almost look like hands or something they're just it's just a really gorgeous plant um, if anyone owns it please let me know how you found it and yeah it just looks gorgeous in some of the pictures it seems to have a sort of blue sheen to it I guess that's why it's called Baltic blue but it really does look gorgeous and I'd love to add that one to my collection if I were to come across it at any point. I've not seen it around again, but I'm sure maybe it might come up, who knows. And next up I have the Philodendron Bellmarks Variegated. And again, this one just has the most gorgeous variegation. This time it's less of a white, but more of a sort of a light green mixed with the dark green. Not only that, but I love the shape of the leaves too, so it's 
got that perfect gorgeous tropical look and it almost looks a bit like a Syngonian to me but it's just gorgeous and I think I would probably try and get this one on a pole if I were to get this one get it to grow big and beautiful but I just love that gorgeous variegation it's almost yellowy lime green and yeah that one would be gorgeous and I've definitely seen this one online on a few places but I've not seen it in the garden centers I probably get most of my plants from uh, Dobby's at the moment but I know you can get sort of more specialised plants online but I'm still a little bit scared about shopping online because it's a plant and I'm worried about the um, risk if it's suffering and dying from the shock of being sent through the post but maybe I'll bite the bullet one day and try it out. Has anyone else ordered plants within the UK or anywhere else? How has your experience gone with that? Next up I have the Philodendron McDowell and I have lusted over this one for quite some time. It has those gorgeous large tropical leaves and they look so pillowy and soft and comfortable and it just looks so gorgeous and tropical. I would love to have a few more large plants in my home. At the moment I don't really have any that are too big but this one I think would look gorgeous and I would love to add it to my collection. I just love the gorgeous shape of those leaves and they are just huge aren't they? I don't know what this one is like to take care of. Has anyone out there got one? If you have let me know how you found it, what your experience has been. But yeah it definitely looks gorgeous and I do have a few philodendrons in my collection already and I have to say philodendrons are one of my favourite groups at the moment. And next on my list I have the Calathea orbifolia and I have fancied this one for a while. I've seen it in some places but I didn't buy it because I was a little bit nervous. I mean it is a Calathea. However I do have some experience with Calathea and I have managed to keep one Calathea alive so I have hoped that maybe I'd keep this one alive but it just looks gorgeous, those ornamental leaves, the way they have those stripes on there, it's just so beautiful. And yeah, I think it, despite the risk of this one being a little finicky with it being a calathea, I'd still like to have a go because I think if I was to have success, it would be worth it because it's a really beautiful looking plant. And with calathea, as long as you give them a little bit more attention and you keep an eye on their needs they can be okay it's only when you sort of leave them or become lapsed for a short amount of time they don't have much of a window where you can save them so you know you've just got to be a little bit more on the ball so yeah I would like to try one so next on the list I have the Diffenbachia compacta and I have had my eye on this one for a while because of this gorgeous variegation it has on the leaves. It has this sort of white splash in the middle and then it's got the mottled green area as well and I just think it looks gorgeous. I'm really attracted to variegated plants at the moment and this one is really attracting me with its bright green and the white. It just looks gorgeous. So I'd love to add this one to my collection. I haven't seen it around too much, but I don't think it's all that unusual. So there's no reason why I shouldn't find it in the garden centers at some point. Do you have one of these already? How do you find it? Please let me know any care tips. I do tend to look up plants before I buy them, um, just to check that I have the right environment for them. So before I do get any of these I will just do a little bit more research um, and just check that I do have the right conditions to take care of the plant. Next on the list I have the Epipremnum Marble Queen and I actually thought I already have one of these because I bought one from the garden centre and it was mislabeled. Um, it turned out that it's actually an Epipremnum Aureum and I still love it but it wasn't the Marble Queen as it was labelled and I'd really love to get a Marble Queen because the leaves are just so gorgeously variegated and 
They are such excellent plants to have in your home, really easy to take care of and yeah, I would just love to have one of these. This time, being a little bit more experienced, I will be able to make sure I actually do get the plant that I'm looking for. I'd say my Epipremnum aureum was probably the first, one of the first plants that I ever got as a plant collector. So when it said Marble Queen on the label, I thought, well, it's a Marble Queen because I didn't know any better. But now I know what I'm looking for, I should know the difference between the two. So yeah, I shall keep my eye out for that one. Next on the list I have the Hoya Bella and this is a little bit different for me. I don't usually go for plants with the smaller leaves like this. I usually go for the plants with the bigger leaves, the, the more striking foliage. But this one, I just saw it and I just thought that's gorgeous the way it kind of cascades. And so I've put this one on my list. It's the only Hoya on my list and I don't actually own any Hoyas yet. So this would be my first Hoya but it also produces these gorgeous white and pink flowers. And again, I'm not usually into flowers that much, but these ones, they just look so nice and elegant with the foliage on it. And yeah, I'd love to have one of these kind of just hanging from my shelf somewhere. And this isn't one that I've seen around, but maybe it's just that I haven't been looking for it because as I say, I don't normally go for plants with really small leaves like this. I tend to go for the the more beef, beefy looking plants with bigger leaves but yeah I'm gonna have a, a good look out for this one and I think it would be really nice to have this one as part of my collection. Next on my wish is that I have the Monstera Obliqua Peru form and this one is one that I actually saw in the garden centre not long ago and it was very expensive so I didn't buy it but when I got home I did some research on the plant and after having done some research on it I have decided that I really would like to have one of these in my collection and it's no surprise really because every time I see a new type of Monstera I tend to fall in love with it. So this one has the gorgeous fenestrations, it's a little bit like the Monstera adansonia, I suppose, but it just looks like it has bigger holes. Um, but I just love how it looks. I love fenestrated plants and this one is just gorgeous. I think I would definitely love to have one of these growing up a pole and to see how big and luscious I could get it. Um, if anyone has any experience with this plant, again, please do let me know. I'd love to hear from you. Next we have another philodendron and this one is the philodendron prince of orange and I've had my eye on this one for a little while now. I just love the way the new growth comes in orange and that orange against the green is just so gorgeous. It's a perfect colour combination, very complementary and yeah it's just a bit different to the usual green plants and I know that I love philodendrons so this one I think would be ideal for me and it looks like it might have orange stems as well and some of the veining looks orange I don't know whether that's a temporary thing and whether that eventually goes green but either way I just think it's beautiful and I would definitely love to add the philodendron prince of orange to my collection for sure and yeah i think i'm slowly working my way through the philodendrons here next on my wish list i have the philodendron silver sword and this one is just stunning not only does it have that gorgeous arrow shaped leaves it also has this beautiful silvery sheen to it and um, this really is right at the top of my wish list, I have to say. And I would love to get one of these and grow it up a pole, see how big I could get it to go. But from the pictures, I just know I would adore this plant. And a lot of the plants that I have are quite a solid green and they are gorgeous and I love them but it would be lovely to have one in this gorgeous silvery colour. It's so beautiful. So yeah, I am 
definitely looking to find one of these and I haven't ever seen them about as far as I can remember but maybe one will come up this year and if it does I will be ready to get it. <laughs> Next on my wish list, I have the Philodendron Lacerum. I think that's how you say it. But again, this is another type of Philodendron, but I just love that shape of the leaf. It's almost got a sort of spideriness about it. But a lot of the Philodendrons I see, they tend to have the more arrow shaped or elongated leaves. So it's just a really nice change to see this different shape to the leaves and yeah I just think it's beautiful looks like they get quite large so I'm thinking maybe growing it up a pole would be the best option um, to let it reach its full potential please let me know if you have one of these if you have any experience of it is it easy how has it been for you so next on my list I have a variegated peace lily and I did actually see this at the garden centre very recently and I saw it and I thought hmm I really like that but I wanted to go away and have a think about it, do a bit of research first and I've had a really good think about it now, I've looked at lots of pictures, I've looked up loads of information about it and I've decided that yes I would like one of these. So I'm going to put this one on my wish list as well. And I think this one is fairly easy to get to because there were quite a lot of them in the garden center and they weren't that expensive either. So I think this one will be a fairly easy one to add to my collection if I want to. Um, but yeah, I just think it's really beautiful. Peace lilies are nice anyway, but to have one with the uh, white variegation through the leaves that just tops it off and makes it even more gorgeous so yeah that one is on my list and next up i have the ficus elastica belize ruby and this one is another rubber plant and um i am quite obsessed with rubber plants at the moment i would love to collect them all and i've seen this one and just thought wow it's gorgeous it's a bit like the ficus tineki only Unlike the Tineki that comes through with the pink, the pink tinge just at the start of growing, um, which eventually fades out to, to the white creamy colour, um, the Ficus Elastica Ruby actually retains its ruby coloured leaves as it grows, so it has this gorgeous red tinge to it. So I would love to add that rubber plant to my collection. It looks gorgeous. I have only seen it online at the moment, but now I will be keeping my eye out for it to see if I can add that one to my collection too. And leading on from that, I have another rubber plant, the Ficus Shiveriana Moonshine. And this is another variation of the rubber plant, and only this one has this gorgeous sort of yellow variegation, almost like moonlight is falling on the leaves, hence the name and it has this sort of speckled variegation on it too and it's just beautiful and I actually did see this one it was it was just a little baby about this big um, at the garden centre last time I was there and I looked at it and I thought hmm I've not seen that before so I'll do a little bit of research on that and I have done and since then I've added the Ficus Tineki to my collection and it's kind of just instilled this brand new obsession with rubber plants so I think I will definitely get my hands on one of those at some point. And finally on my list I have the Sansevieria Metallica and this is a snake plant with silvery coloured leaves as you can see and I just think it's gorgeous. I have quite a few snake plants now they sort of seem to be multiplying but I don't have this one so this one with the silvery colour is really unique. I've not seen one of these before. In fact, I don't think I've seen them for sale anywhere, but they do exist, so I shall be keeping my eye out for one now. I would love to put one of these silvery snake plants next to my regular snake plants and just see how cool they look together. 
And yeah, so that brings me to the end of the list, guys. Was there anything on there that you also have on your list? Or do you have anything on your wish list for this year that wasn't on mine? Let me know in the comments. I'm really interested in what you have on your wish list too, so please let me know. I do read all your comments. And just another little announcement at the end. Um, I now have a Patreon page, which I will link down in the description. And it's just another way of kind of trying to create a community, a house planty community. Um, so if you are interested, check that link in the description. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel and I will see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.